Okay, so we're back uh, to the lecture. This is part 2 of lecture 1, SIG 2004. Okay, so still on the topic of silicic plastics. And the second part, we're going to focus on what we call sediment textures, sediment and sedimentary rock textures. So we've learned what sediments are, what they are mainly composed of. So we need to know the terminology of, of how to describe sediments. And the basic um, terminology that you need to know is what we call textures. So what do we mean by the texture of, of a sediment? Um, the texture includes the following properties. First, you have grain size, then you have grain shape, followed by grain fabric. Okay, so we'll go through these different textural properties one by one. First, we go to grain size. So grain size is easy to understand. It's basically just the, the size of the grains inside your sediment or sedimentary rocks. Right? So you can say that the grains might be um, of a certain dimension. The diameter might be between 2 to 4 millimeters, or it might be finer, or it might be coarser, and so on. Right? So this is what we mean by grain size. Okay? So we need a systematic scale to um, describe and measure grain size in silicic classic sediments. And the common scale that we use is what is called the Arden Wentworth grain size scale. Okay. Uh, this is mostly most widely used by sedimentologists. And this is this is a scale. Okay, so just to let's just go through what you see in in the scale itself. Um, so on the column here, you notice that uh, these names here are the different types of groups of sediments that you will meet uh, based on grain size. So going from finer, you call it mud, then you have your sands, intermediate, and then you have your coarser grains, which called gravel. Okay? And this column here shows you the, the, the dimensions, uh, the diameter, basically, of each different type of grain size, or grain size class. Okay? All these are individual grain size classes. Okay? So here you have, you're going from finer 0 0.0039 millimeters up to 256 millimeters uh, scale here. Okay. And you give different names to your sediment based on the uh, grain size. Okay. So basically you can uh, identify four basic uh, grain size divisions. First, you have your clays, which are less than 0 0.0039 uh, millimeters in size. Then you have your silts, which are between 0 0.039 millimeters to 0 0.0625 millimeters. Then you have your coarser sands, uh, go from that, that size up to 2 millimeters. And then you can divide your sands into smaller subdivisions as very fine, fine, medium, coarse, very coarse. And these are the size ranges for the sands. And anything above 2 millimeters is called gravel. You can divide your gravel into different subdivisions. Also, going from granules to pebbles to cobbles to boulders. So anything above 256 millimeters in size, we call them boulders. Might be house, uh, the size of a house. That's, that's a boulder. Right. So example here, when I say medium uh, a sample of sediment and the grain size is medium sand, this is here. So we know that the size must be more than 0 0.25 millimeters, must be about zero, uh, a quarter, uh, yeah, quarter, quarter of a millimeter uh, and just up to half a millimeter in size. So that is the grain size range for medium sand and so on for the different subdivisions. Okay. So you should know what mud means, sand means, and gravel, and the difference between very fine, fine, medium, coarse, and very coarse sand. Okay. Okay, so the other way of uh, scale is very practical, very useful for describing, uh, yeah, it's for a wide range of grain sizes, going from very fine to the very coarse. And that wide range is also a weakness of the, the scale. Um, 
Well, otherwise, was great, great size scale is, is very hard to use for statistics, right? First, because the magnitude of each size class is very different. We're going from, look at that, 0 0.0039 yeah, for decimals uh, up to 256 millimeters, tens of centimeters. In some cases, we have boulders that can be well, several centimeters uh, large, uh, centimeters in diameter and so on, right? So very wide size range. Okay? You are going to need a logarithmic scale to, to put it all in a single graph, right? Uh, and also another thing is there are many size classes which are in fractions, half, quarter, and so on. So it's hard to put, uh, hard to do statistical analysis like like, like this. So you need you need to add, to have another easier scale to do statistical analysis. Okay. Um, so that's why we have what is called the phi scale. Okay, so this is the phi scale. So you have the other one with great green size scale here, right? You have the, 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 the diameter in millimeters and the and the common names, okay? the verbal names eh? in this area, sand, gravel, and so on. But notice the numbers along the right-hand side here, this column here. This is size in the phi scale. So you say here, negative 8 phi, you know, uh, 0 phi. Okay? That's, so that's, that's the green size. By using the phi scale. So the phi scale is a logarithmic scale and it is expressed in integer. So you get whole number. So easier to use you know, for statistical analysis. Yeah. If you are interested in how you, you get the, these whole numbers, this is the equation. Okay. Uh, so yeah, just deriving from uh, grain size in millimeters and you just change it to, phi, to a phi scale. So this is, uh, the phi scale is very useful for easier graphical plotting, uh, statistical calculations. I get even size divisions. Uh, one pattern you need, uh, you must take note is this. Okay? Uh, when you have negative value, it means that it's going to get coarser. Notice here, coarser ones have a negative value. Uh, positive values, higher positive values, it becomes finer. Okay, so remember that, right? negative, coarser, positive, finer. Okay, so those are the two common schemes to, yeah, to describe, yeah, to describe grain size. But how do you actually measure grain size? Well, it, it depends. It depends on the type of sample you are working with. Remember, lots of different kinds of sedimentologists working with different kinds of materials, uh, different kinds of, uh, yeah, uh, sediments, obviously, yeah. Um, it depends on the grain size, basically, right? Uh, coarser grains, you might need to have different tools. Finer grains, you need to have another kind of tool, right? So, example here, right? you can do, make direct measurements for coarser materials, uh, for coarser sediments from medium sand to boulders. You can use just your eyes, your uh, hand lens or ruler, right? You need to do sieve analysis for finer grain uh, sands, uh, setting tube for very fine grain particles, you might need to use a microscope uh, in, some, in some cases, especially if you're working with consolidated uh, consolidated sediments. So I, I mean sedimentary rocks, basically, right? And for the very fine grain sediments, silt and clay, uh, you need to have other kinds of methods. So let's go to the, the next slide here. Just to this is a, just a list of the common types of methods you use to measure sediment grain size. Based on so two criteria are important. First, whether or not the sediment is consolidated or not. So it might it might be unconsolidated sediment or it might be lithified sediment here. So let's just go through this. So let's say you're working with sample which is unconsolidated sediment and it's made up of gravel. So it's easy. Just take your ruler or measuring tape, you can do manual measurement of the individual class because the class are easy to see. Uh, so notice that I'm using the term class here, right? So this is again interchangeable with grain and particle. It means the same thing. For finer grain particles like granules, sands to clays, uh, you might use sieving methods or settling tube methods or even image analysis using computers. Uh, if it is sedimentary rock, 
coarser grains, you can still use manual measurement. For finer grains, you need to have a microscope and do some thin section measurements and also from image analysis. And for very fine grain fractions, clay especially, you're going to need a high power electron microscope to actually see the, and measure the individual grains. Okay? Okay, so I have a little more detail here on measurement measurements of grain size. Uh, let's go through this. Um, so let's say we have lithified sedimentary rock. Uh, for example, uh, this is a conglomerate. We'll talk about conglomerate later on in, in, in the lectures. Um, so you can actually see the individual grains and just directly measure it with the measuring tape. For sandstones, uh, well, you can identify it's a sand just by looking at the grains, right? Because the grains will be visible uh, uh, just by looking through your naked eyes. But to be more accurate, whether you, you need to determine whether it's very coarse, coarse or medium grain, right? So you use a visual estimation method. You have this grain size card. And this is uh, available to, to be, you, you can buy this uh, online from geological societies also, right? And what you have here is a picture card. And with the actual visual sizes of the different subdivisions of sand. So what you do, you get a sample of sand. You put it very close to the grain size card here. And then you take a hand lens and you just compare the sizes of your the sample grains with the, with the picture. And then you say, well, yeah, you determine whether it's coarse or medium and so on. Okay. So this is called visual estimation. And it is good enough for use in the field. Practically, right? It's not really that accurate, but it's, it's uh, for field work, right? Uh, first approximation, it is good. For mudstones, um, you can use visual estimation also. Uh, first, you can't really see the grain, so that's your first clue, right? Sense so you can see the grain, it's not It's going to be smooth. Uh, you first touch the sample and describe whether the texture is gritty or smooth. Uh, some geologists also take a bite of the, of a, of the specimen, just a small bite here. Uh, and if you, you can, if you can feel a gritty texture, it's going to be a silt dominator. It's going to, if it is smooth, uh, it's non-gritty when bitten, it is uh, mainly made up of clay. You can also use a scratch test. If you have a steel probe or a pen knife, you can scratch uh, the, the mudstone. And if the mudstone shows a waxy luster and dark color, it's going to be a clay stone. It's going to be dominated by clay. But if the sample has a, when scratched, has a dull luster, it is lighter color, most likely it will be a silt stone. So this is very qualitative. Be careful. Uh, especially if your mudstone has uh, been cemented, let's say, by, by, by calcite or even type pen. So it's going to get, if you, uh, the results will be not really that straightforward. Okay, but uh, for first approximations in the field, these are very useful. Now, if you have uh, lithified sandstone samples, uh, to be more, uh, to, to have a more accurate measurement of the grain size, you need to do them some thin sections. Huh? And look at the thin sections under a microscope where you can measure it, me measure individual grain size directly. Right? Okay, so those were the main methods to measure grain size in lithified sedimentary rock. But what about unlithified sediments? What kinds of methods are commonly used? Now, if you are measuring grain size of sands, the most common method you use is uh, using a sieve, uh, a sieving method. Yeah? So you have a sample of sand of a certain weight, right? So bring it to the lab. And at the left, you have these seeds. Okay? 
and uh, the sieves have uh, a screen at the its at, at its base, and the screen is made up of small holes, a wire mesh, yeah? and the holes have a certain size to them. Okay, and different sieves can have different size meshes. Okay, so you can actually stack different sized sieves on top of each other following the Arden Wentworth grade scale. Okay, so go from coarser at the top to finer at the bottom. So in this case, negative, coarser, positive, which is finer here. And stack it on top of each other like this, following the other one with grade scale. And then you put in your sand sample, your sand into the first sieve here. And then you shake it for a certain period of time. So what happens is that the sample will be sorted based on grain size. And you can actually measure the width of the individual grain, grain size classes. So yeah, uh, a sample is passed through a vertically stacked set of square hole screens or sieves. Uh, different sieves have different size meshes. Sieve mesh size can be vertically stacked following the other one with this grain size scale. Courses at the top, finest at the bottom. Sediment filled in the topmost stack. And you can mechanically shake all uh, the, the stack here. Grains that are larger than the holes remain on the sieve. Smaller grains percolate down and down and down. It's got a filter. Right? And the grains collected on each screen are weighed, the timbang, to determine the weight of sediment in each range of grain size. Okay, So you can do statistics with this. Okay, And you can display the grain size data uh, as bivariate diagrams. For example, you can uh, plot a histogram, uh, grain size, five units here, going from cost to fine in this case. Uh, versus weight percentage, 0 to 40% in this case. Okay. So you can draw a histogram. In this case, it's a nice normal distribution, right? Bell curve. Uh, or you can plot it as a frequency curve. The bar is replaced by the a smooth curve. We are yeah, just connecting the midpoint of each size class. Other kinds of plots that you can do based on the the, the sieve uh, data analysis, um, you can do a cumulative curve. Okay. So in this case, you're just uh, just adding up the total weight then yeah, by percentage yeah, until you get 100%. So you get, that's the cumulative weight percentage, 0 to 100% in this case. And that is again the size uh, in, in phi scale. Okay. So, but in this case, it is an arithmetic scale. So, if you have a normal distribution, you get this nice curve like this. Okay. But if you use a logarithmic log probability scale, uh, a normal population, you get a straight line. And if you have more than one population, you get lots of straight lines with different angles to them. Okay. So, you can do st uh, statistical analysis of grain size, uh, of grain size data uh, of sand samples. Okay. And that is, this is usually uh, used in modern-day sediment studies, environmental studies, and also in site investigation studies for, for engineering, yeah? civil engineering. And using the, the statistical analysis, yeah, you can measure, uh, you can determine the grain size, and what you usually describe is the average grain size of a sample, okay? because you have a range of grain sizes, right? Uh, there are three main measures of average grain size. You can determine the modal size, the most frequent grain size, or the midpoint grain size, which is the median, or the mean grain size. Okay, sieve analysis is used for sand. Right? Uh, what about finer grain part particles? What about finer grain sediments? If, let's say you have a sample of clay or in general just mud or silt right so what kinds of methods can you use to determine grain size lots of different methods uh, this is one basic way to do it uh, you measure the fall time of particles through the water in a settling tube so this is a sedimentation method okay so you have a column of water and you put in the the, the, the mud sample inside it and you measure the time for the particles to fall down. Okay. Uh, how does this work? Well, it, it works because of Stokes' law. 
the falling time of the grains is equated to the grain diameter. Okay. So hopefully you still remember your secondary school physics, right? So this is Stokes' law. Uh, let's see what Stokes' law says. Uh, the settling velocity of particles in the fluid is determined by first we have particle size, uh, difference in density between the particle and the fluid and the fluid viscosity. So let's say we are using, in this case, simple, a simple analysis, just using water in our water column here, and you dump in mud into into the in, into your apparatus here. Okay. So, and how fast your particle falls down depends on these three factors here. The size of the grains, the difference in density between the particles and the fluids, and also the viscosity of the fluid. Okay. And all these are part of the equation, right? Don't notice that. Settling velocity, grain diameter, difference in density, viscosity, and also put in here gravity. What is meant by terminal settling velocity? You've done this experiment also in sedimentary, uh, in secondary school. Eh? Uh, at this velocity, the frictional drag due to viscous forces, forces is just balanced by the gravitational force. So there is no acceleration. Falls down at the constant velocity, right? The grain. So you've reached the terminal second resource. So the general rule is this. Frictional drag is smaller for large spheres than for small ones. Okay? Therefore, the terminal velocity of a large sphere is greater than that for a small sphere of the same material. So in common language, simple guinea. Two grains, the coarser grain will fall faster. Okay, so that's the basic. Okay, so that, that is how to use sedimentation methods um, to, to, to determine grain size of particles in, yeah, in mud samples. Okay. So, okay, so that's the second part. Okay, we'll talk about the other textual properties in lecture number two. Okay, bye-bye.